Welcome back. Today we are going to discuss the methods we use to secure our VPC in AWS Cloud. In this video, we are going to look to VPC networking and security. Let us first discuss the Internet Gateway. We know from previous class that a route table enables our EC2 instances in a private subnet and public subnet to communicate with each other. If the EC2 in the private subnet wants to communicate with the EC2 in the public subnet, the local target in the route table carries the message between them. Also, if the EC2 in the public subnet wants to communicate with the internet, it must use a service called an internet gateway. An internet gateway is a scalable, redundant, and highly available VPC component that allows communication between instances in your VPC and the internet. What if our EC2 in the public subnet wants to access the internet? To do this, we need a service called NAT gateway. So we understand that a NAT gateway enables your instances in the public subnet to access the internet and to be accessed from the internet. But what if an end user wants to communicate directly with your instances in the private subnets? It will not be allowed. But the instances we have in the private subnets, they might need to do software updates or download a security patches to enable those resources to access the internet. You can do this by adding a component called NAT Gateway to your VPC. When you create a NAT Gateway, you must specify the public subnet in which the NAT Gateway should reside. You must also specify an elastic IP address to associate it with your NAT Gateway. After you create a NAT Gateway, you must update the route table that is associated with one or more of your private subnet to point internet bound traffic to the NAT gateway so that instances in your private subnets can communicate with the internet. Now let us understand how we can add the security layers to our VPC. But before that, we need to understand how communication actually works in computer network. In computer networks, a computer is able to access a web server resources using a model called the client server. The client initiate the request and the server respond to this request by sending the message back to the client. So for example, an end user wants to access amazon.com website. In this case, the client of the end user send a request to the web server requesting a copy of the main page. Then the amazon.com web server receives the request and sends the client a copy of the main website. Now in the previous example, we have one client requesting one type of content, which is a web content. But what if the client needs also to watch YouTube video or send a new email or upload a file? In this case, the client computer must request the right content from the server and it must specify the right port number. So if the client wants to view a web content, then he must send a request to port number 80. If the client wants to view YouTube, it will be also sending a request to port 80 because YouTube is similar to Amazon, both are web servers. If the client wants to send a new email via Gmail, he must send the request at port 25 because this is where the SMTP server operates. If the client wants to upload a file to Google Drive, then he will use his port 21, which is the port allocated to file transfer protocol. So in the client server model, each service it has its own port number and these different port numbers are standard and they do not change. But why I'm telling you this? For a simple reason. If we build those services inside our VPC in AWS, we have to follow the same standard and we use those reserved port numbers. But how we can do this in AWS VPC? It is very simple. We create a security group and in that security group, we open the port that we need to accept the traffic in that port. In this example, we have an EC2 instance running the Amazon.com website. So we need to open port 80. But how we can do that by enabling an inbound traffic to reach the EC2 instance inside your VPC? It is very simple. By creating a security group 
and adding a specific rule to open port 80 to accept the traffic from anywhere. A security group acts as a virtual firewall for your instances, and it controls inbound and outbound traffic. Security groups act at the instance level, not at the subnet level. Therefore, each instance in a subnet in your VPC can be assigned to a different set of security groups. Security groups have rules that control the inbound and outbound traffic. When you create a security group, it has no inbound rules by default. Therefore, no inbound traffic will be accepted until you add a rule to accept that traffic at a specific port. By default, a security group includes an outbound rule that allows all outbound traffic to go from your EC2 to the internet. You can remove the rule and add an outbound rules that allow specific traffic only to go from your EC2 to the internet. Security groups are stateful, which means that the state on formation is kept even after a request is processed. Also, when you open port 80 inbound, by default, the reply port 80 will be open. Similar to security groups, we can also control the traffic at the instance level using a network access control list. A network access list is an optional layer of security for your Amazon VPC. It acts as a firewall for controlling a traffic in and out of one or more subnets. To add another layer of security to your VPC, you can set up network access list and you specify rules to allow or deny a specific traffic. A network access list has a separate inbound and outbound rules and each rule can either allow or deny traffic. Your VPC automatically comes with a modifiable default network access list. By default, it allows all inbound and outbound IBV4 traffic and if applicable, IBV6 traffic also. So what is the summary of the differences between security group and network access list? Security groups act at the instance level, but network access list act at the subnet level. Security groups support allow rules only. You can deny a specific traffic in security group, but network access list support both. You can allow and deny a specific traffic. Security groups are stateful. If you open port 80 inbound, port 80 outbound is also open by default. But in networking access list, those are stateless, which means if you want to allow port 80 inbound, you have to add also another rule to allow port 80 outbound. For security groups, all rules are evaluated before the decision is made to allow traffic. For network access list, rules are evaluated in number order before the decision is made to allow a traffic or to deny. Let us now practice what we just learned. Try to open a notepad or drawing a software like draw.io. The link to use draw.io to design a VPC will be in the description of this video. You have a small business with a website that is hosted on Amazon EC2 instance service. You have customer data that is stored on a backend database server. You want to keep those data private. So you want to use Amazon VPC to set up a VPC that meets the following requirements. Your web server and database server must be in separate subnets. The first address of your network must be 10.0.0.0. Each subnet must have 256 total IBV4 addresses and your customers must always be able to access your web server and your database server must be able to access the internet to make patch updates. Your architecture must be highly available and use at least one custom firewall layer. And now try to practice what we have learned by building a VPC in the management console of AWS. So in this lab, your task is to create a VPC then you create additional subnets similar to the diagram you are seeing here and you want to configure a route table following the information that you can see here in the slide and you want to launch a web server instance. Now let me show you how you can build a VPC and launch a web server using this demo. Create a VPC successfully 
we need to go to the management console and then we go to the VPC and from the VPC menu we have in the left navigation pad what the first thing we need to do is to create an elastic IP so if you go here to the elastic IP then you allocate an elastic IP it's going to be in US East because this is the region where I am located now click on allocate now go to your VPC what you could use is the VPC dashboard here and from the VPC dashboard you will find the So to create a VPC, after we allocate the Elastic IP, we want to launch a VPC wizard. We select the second option. You can create a VPC with single public submit if you want. But in this demo, I want to show you how to create a public and a private submit. Similar to what we are going to do in the lab. I'm going to call this demo. Now, this is going to be in the first ability zone for my public submit and the private submit and I'm going to use a NAT gateway. My NAT gateway is going to take the elastic IP that I just create, select it, and now click on create a VPC. Once this VPC is ready, you can use it to launch a new instance, to launch a, a private instance in the private subnet or a public web server in the public subnet. So my VPC is ready now. So all I need to do is to go and test that I did the right work in this VPC. So I'm going to go to the EC2s. From the EC2, I'm going to launch an EC2 instance. So go to instances, launch an instance, select the first one, which is the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. I'm going to keep the default configuration here. I want to place this in my demo VPC. I want it to be in my public subnet not in my private subnet. I want to enable auto assign public IP. And here in the user data, I'm going just to paste a demo script that I will leave in the description if you want to try this later on. This is going to install a demo application to test our configuration. Add the storage, add tag. And for the tag here, you can just simply write name. And this name is going to be with server. And now select the security group. This is going to be my web security group. I will add to it port HTTP. And this is going to be from anywhere. Review and launch. I'm going to launch it with the key pair that I have there. And now select on launch. Now this should take a few minutes to be available. Now it is in pending state. So let us wait for this to become available. All we need to do is to copy the IP address, the public IP address, and test that we can see the demo application. Now the web server is ready. Go and select it from the checkbox. It will display the details of this web server. Copy the IP address and open a new tab and paste it you should be able to see the demo application. So this is pretty much what you need to do in order to create a VPC. Thank you for seeing this video and see you in the next one.